Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on the topic Human Health and Disease Part 7 and this video is presented to you by www.examna.com. The topics we are going to discuss in this video is active and passive immunity, vaccination and immunization, allergies and autoimmunity. So what is active immunity? So when a host is exposed to any kind of antigen which is dead or alive or any kind of protein, so the host develop antibodies against that antigen. So this is uh, this kind of mechanism is called active immunity and this similar mechanism is used in vaccination. So in vaccination, uh, the vaccines were developed in which the microbes were either li uh, living or dead. So, if the microbe is living, so the quantity of microbes to be injected into the host body is very small so that it cannot uh, cause any kind of disease but it can uh, enhance the immune system to produce antibodies against that uh, microbe. So after uh, the antibody is developed inside the uh, host, so if any further exposure to the same microbe is there, then the body can respond uh, very uh, actively towards that uh, microbe. So this whole mechanism is based on the fact that our body has B cell which can produce uh, memory cells too as we have discussed in our previous video and those memory cells are stored if there is any further attack with the same microbe so that memory cell uh, can attack very uh, hyperactively and uh, should kill the microbe and a, a host should not get any kind of uh, disease okay. So this is what I have uh, discussed about if the microbe is living and what if the microbe is dead. If the microbe is dead then obviously it will not cause any kind of disease but the structure of microbe is as it is like if we consider this as a structure of any bacteria then if it is dead then the structure would not be degraded structure will remain as it is and these are the antigen which is present on the surface of the uh, bacteria and when it is injected inside the uh, body of host so it will enhance the immune system because these antigen are the structure against which the antibody will be developed inside the host. So against this the antibody will be developed inside the host. And if in future there is further if any attack with the same microorganism which are alive then those antibody which are stored as a memory cell will show their action uh, very hyperactively and will kill the microbes. So this is all about active immunity. So this phenomena is this similar phenomena is used in vaccination. Now we will discuss about passive immunity. Passive immunity is a kind of ready-made antibody. So these antibodies are developed inside any other host like horse or pig or rabbit and the blood from that uh, host is taken out and the antibodies are filtered from the blood and if there is any attack to the humans of that same microbe then these antibodies are injected directly. These are the ready-made antibody and they will kill the antigen uh, on the spot and there would be no any kind of disease will occur to the uh, person. Okay, So this is a kind of passive immunity in which ready-made antibodies are uh, developed. Uh, the example of the passive immunity is like uh, uh, snake venom, rabies or tetanus toxin. Okay. So now the question arises that why mother milk is essential for the newborn. So the mother milk has lot of antibody, abundant of antibody IgA. 
okay so that iga antibody give immunity to the infant and which uh, let the infant to uh, survive in the outer environment and become immunized uh, against some of the bacteria which is present in the atmosphere during pregnancy also the fetus receive the antibody through placenta of the mother as you can see in this picture through placenta of mother the fetus receive some of the antibody so that the fetus would get immune against uh, many kind of bacteria when the baby will come out and exposed to the environment okay so this is all about immunity so now we will discuss about vaccination and immunization and uh, for this i will tell you one story about edward jenner and he was the first person uh, who developed the technique of vaccination in 1796 on james philip phipps and this james phipps is a child 8 year old child uh, on which this test is performed okay so the country to which the edward jenner belong is england and uh, at that at that time and uh, at that time when the vaccination was developed the smallpox was epidemic in england and many of the people were killed due to this smallpox uh, virus but what uh, jenner observed that the persons uh, working with the cattle like cow the farmers the dairy people they do not get uh, suffer with smallpox and if they get infected with the smallpox virus they get recover very fast so this uh, question arise inside the mind of uh, jenner that how it is possible so what he uh, made a conclusion of that this uh, lead him to think that the attack of cowpox has made these people immune to sm smallpox and that vaccine uh, vaccinating people with cowpox could protect from smallpox so he thought that the cowpox virus and the smallpox virus is uh, similar in somehow manner so that the antibody developed against the cowpox virus will work will also work against the smallpox so for uh, his uh, uh, test uh, james james phipps a healthy boy about 8 year old uh, he injected he cut on uh, his skin and he injected the cowpox virus inside it which he, he had taken from the cow's pustil and uh, after the injection uh, that boy get uh, ill and then uh, later he recovered after two month to get the test positive about that uh, the same uh, antibodies are effective against smallpox or not uh, edward jenner again inoculated the smallpox virus inside the boy and he found that the boy did not uh, get Uh, smallpox and he totally recovered the smallpox he actually got immune with the uh, smallpox virus so this is how he uh, developed the first vaccine of smallpox so the principle of immunization or we can say vaccination is based on the property of memory of immune system so as i have discussed earlier that the b cells inside our body develop memory cell also it develop uh, antibodies at the same time to uh, fight against the uh, antigen but at that time the response was not so much that it would kill all of the bacteria but bacteria or virus or any kind of microbe but if there is any further attack of the the same bacteria or virus then the hyperactive response is uh, shown by by the memory cell 
uh, of our body which was memory antibodies or memory cell which were developed by the B cell earlier and uh, due to which our body get uh, recover soon uh, from that particular disease. So this is how vaccination and immunization work. Recombinant DNA technology is a very latest and the new technology which has allowed to produce the antigenic polypeptide of the pathogen in bacteria or yeast and uh, these are produced uh, uh, on large scale for example hepatitis B vaccines. Okay, so next we will discuss about allergies. So what is allergy? It is actually the immune response of a person which is actually inappropriate towards the harmless substances, harmless substances whichever come in contact with the body of that person by any means, by air, by food, by water or by or through medicine, any of that. So now the question uh, arises how this response is developed inside the uh, inside a person so this allergic response is occur only 10% of the total population 90% of the population did not get this allergic response because this is a kind of genetic disorder which uh, travels from one which transfers from one generation to another generation and uh, also to the infants or uh, children uh, which were not breastfeed, which were bottle feed on their earlier age. So now what are allergenes? Allergenes are those substances which cause allergic reaction and the allergen can be uh, pollen grain or dust or uh, penicillin uh, drug or uh, food like milk, egg fish or feathers or fur of any uh, animal, cat saliva, spores, any kind of thing which uh, enhance the allergic response inside the uh, host is called allergy. So now what are the symptoms? The symptom is sneezing, inflammation in the mucous membrane, running nose, irritation in throat, itching and skin rashes are some of the symptoms. Okay, now we will discuss about what is the cause. Okay, so we will consider this as a allergy and uh, this may be this may be any uh, pollen grain or uh, any kind of uh, dust or feather or food anything okay so this is b cell okay so the t cell in our body recognize the thing self and non self inside our body so what are the non self thing inside our body uh, which enters our body and uh, that are non-self to our body is considered as antigen or foreign material to our body and then the body response, uh, immune response uh, against that foreign material. And uh, so this is a actually kind of an improper immune mechanism which occur inside some persons. So when there is first exposure of this allergy to the B cell, the B cell will produce antibodies against this allergy as it will consider it as a foreign material whether it is harmless or not. So it is, this is the normal mechanism but the allergy is actually harmless but the body uh, produce antibody against that harmless uh, thing. So these antibodies are IgE. Okay. So after the first exposure of an allergen, do, uh, is, uh, do not cause any kind of allergic reaction. So this process is called sensitizing 
dose. So this was the first exposure. But on the next exposure and further next and next next exposure, what happened that the allergen shows second uh, secondary immune response, which is called shocking dose. So if the next exposure of these allergen uh, is there to the body, then the immune uh, then these uh, antibody will which act as a memory cell and uh, these antibody will consider it as a foreign material or as a pathogen and these antibody will attach over the mast cell these antibody will attach over the mast cell so these are the mast cell which are present inside the blood and uh, these are this is the pollen grain okay after that this mast cell will break down or burst and histamine will release from the cell so histamine will release from the cell and now this histamine is actually allergy mediator it increases the permeability of capillary and contract the smooth muscle in many part of the body for example bronchioles so if the contraction in bronchioles take place then it will cause breathing problem okay so this is how the uh, allergic response occur so now some of the examples are hay fever so in hay fever the antigen is pollen and the area affected is mucous member membrane of eyes nose so the allergic reaction result in uh, reddening and reddening of eyes and nose and running eyes and nose so there would be water coming out from eyes and nose so this condition is called hay fever and uh, to cure this uh, hay fever antihistamine pills is given to uh, nullify this histamine to uh, stop the action of this histamine and the cells would not get any kind of damage and the second one is asthma so in asthma uh, the allergic reaction occur in the respiratory tract and the tissue surrounding the tube uh, leading to the lungs through which we take air inside so the lungs get swell up so due to which the tube get compressed and the movement of air inside the lungs get blocked and this condition is called asthma and the treatment of asthma is also antihistamine the third one is anaphylactic shock so this anaphylactic shock is actually very severe to the person so the antigen may be some bee sting or uh, some injection such as penicillin or any kind of food which is taken orally so the infected uh, the person will get sudden itching and uh, the skin will get red and uh, also there occur vomiting diarrhea and the face and tongue will get swell up and there will be breathing difficulty the blood pressure will get low immediately and due to this unconscious condition the individual may die within a short period of time and the cure of this anaphylactic shock is also antihistamine or the injection of epinephrine can be uh, given to the person okay so this is all about allergies now we will discuss about autoimmune disease so this is also a kind of improper immune response or improper immune mechanism of a person so a person will reject the uh, tissues of 
person's own body and consider it as a non-self and due to which the the tissue uh, of that particular organ get, get damaged and uh, it get damaged regularly due to which there is uh, loss of organ or the loss of function of that particular organ so this is a kind of uh, auto immunity in which uh, our body auto means self and immunity means uh, the immunity against the self tissue or self cell okay so the examples are chronic anemia so in chronic anemia our body consider rbc as in uh, foreign material and start destroying our body's own rbc and due to which the destruction of uh, due to destruction of rbc their rbc become very low inside the blood and uh, the chronic anemia causes the second one is severe muscular weakness in severe muscular weakness the body considered our muscle cell as a foreign material and start destroying our uh, muscle cell due to which severe muscular weakness cause the last one is uh, chronic hepatitis in which the body consider the liver cell as an antigen and start killing the cells due to which the liver uh, stop uh, its function so this is a kind of chronic hepatitis and the size of liver get diminish uh, further the other examples are insulin dependent diabetes rheumatoid arthritis and addison's disease so in what happen in addison disease the adrenal gland which is present over kidney uh, the body consider the adrenal gland as a non self and produces antigen uh, antibodies against the adrenal uh, gland tissue and start destroying the adrenal gland due to which the person is not able to run not able to walk not able to do any kind of physical activity so this is also a very uh, severe disease now what is the cause of autoimmunity so in some cases the foreign antigen is very similar to our body's own protein so if the foreign antigen is like this so it is very similar to our body's own protein it would be also like this same similar okay so whatever body do that the antibody which is developed against this foreign antigen will also destroy this antigen which is present inside the body and which is self and this is actually non self or foreign okay but our body start destroy uh, the body will produce antibody against this but it will also destroy this for example uh, for example is the antibody form to fight streptococcal infection may attack body's own protein and frequently it will damage heart wall so the streptococcal uh, the antibodies which form the against the streptococcal infection will attack will also attack body's own protein and will damage uh, the heart wall so this is a kind of autoimmune disease in the next video we will discuss about immunodeficiency diseases for uh, like uh, aids and also we will discuss about uh, cancer thank you for watching this video subscribe exam hai on youtube like our videos and please do comment